Could life have been discovered on Mars over 40 years ago? Stay tuned and find out. Viking Landers 1 and 2 touched down on Mars in 1976. This was the first time anyone had successfully landed on the Red Planet, giving us our first close-up look at the Martian environment. The surface conditions were found to be daunting, with an atmospheric density of less than 1% of Earth's and temperatures that can dip as low as minus 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Pictures from orbit showed a complicated planet featuring vast drainage networks and river valleys, showing that Mars was once a very wet and Earth-like world compared to the cold, dry desert that it is today. It was an environment where life could have developed and evolved, if present. One of the goals of the Viking program was to look for evidence of possible life. To try to answer that question, both landers contained a set of four instruments, a gas chromatograph used to search for organic compounds in the soil, and three experiments that each looked for signs of biological activity in a different way. The most interesting results came from the labeled release experiment. In this activity, a small amount of soil was given a nutrient solution that was tagged with radioactive carbon-14. The sample was then exposed to Martian day-night illumination cycles and temperatures. If any of the nutrients were metabolized by anything living in the soil, the gas given off would be tagged with radioactive carbon. In fact, that's exactly what happened. Large amounts of labeled gas were detected every time the experiment was conducted at both landing sites. The data also showed the gas was being generated following the day-night cycle on the surface. As a control, samples were sterilized by heating to 356 degrees Fahrenheit for three hours. In that case, the reaction disappeared. Samples heated to 122 degrees for three hours, a temperature much above natural surface conditions, showed a greatly reduced reaction. This was exciting news until the results from the gas chromatograph experiment showed the soil contains no organic compounds. That result negated the label release experiment. Evidence for life was seen, but no bodies were found. No matter how positive the results looked from the label release experiment, you simply couldn't have life as we know it without organic compounds being present. That ended the discussion in the 1970s, and the labeled release experiment, or anything like it, was never flown on any subsequent Mars landing mission, of which there have been many. In these later missions, organic compounds in the soil were eventually found. The original Viking gas chromatograph simply didn't have the required sensitivity to detect them. However, after Viking, the focus had already shifted away from direct life detection to studying and understanding the history of water on Mars. The positive findings of the labeled release experiment were explained away by the presence of oxidizing compounds in the soil. But exactly how these compounds can replicate the Viking results in detail has yet to be fully shown. In the decades since Viking, evidence has been mounting. In 1996, researchers studying a meteorite that came from Mars uncovered minerals and tiny structures that are reminiscent of early life on Earth. So much excitement was generated that then-President Bill Clinton announced the findings to the world. Later, scientists were able to come up with ways that non-biological processes could have created the structures. However, the debate continues today. More recently, methane has been found in the Martian atmosphere whose concentration rises and falls in a yearly cycle. The Curiosity rover has also detected transitory plumes of methane much above the background amounts. This is interesting because methane is rapidly destroyed in the Martian atmosphere. It has to be constantly replenished to be there at all. The gas can be produced by geological processes or biological, so its presence is not definitive evidence of life. However, the seasonal variation is very suggestive and continues to be studied. So, the search for life continues. We do know that Mars had the conditions to sustain life billions of years ago, so it wouldn't be surprising that remnants have evolved to survive in the harsh conditions that Mars offers today. Life is found in extreme environments here on Earth, 
And while conditions can change, it's very hard to sterilize an entire planet once life takes hold. Unless something unambiguous is found, the truth will not be known until we have boots on the ground or until the samples that the Perseverance rover is presently collecting are returned for testing here on Earth. Despite the suggestive evidence gathered over the decades, it will still be some time before we can definitively answer one of the most important questions in science. Stay tuned.